Welcome to this video on the Alfa Romeo 156. This is a design analogy on why the 156 is the best designed Alfa Romeo ever. The Milanese sports sedan was introduced in 1997 and was designed under the guidance of Walter da Silva. The team delivered groundbreaking design work, both conceptually and aesthetically. The 156 is a textbook example of how good design works. The design is conceptually correct. It is the true embodiment of the DNA of the Italian brand, translated into sculpture. And what kind of a sculpture? The 156 is as innovative as the technology of the brand was at the time. The exterior looks fresh, visually light, sporty, sophisticated and above all, modern. Important to mention is that the 156 design is not a simple retrospectively orientated exercise. While the design clearly respects and honors the brand's rich history, it projects all of these character traits right into the future. The complex but subtly sculpted body is immediately recognizable as being created by Anonima Lombarda Fabrica Automobili. And since Alfa Romeo is a brand that states to make modern driver cars, that message must actually speak from the exterior design. Walter de Silva understood that by simply looking back, the Quor Sportivo could not be credited to the design in any way. The European car of the year 1998 had many original aesthetical features. One of the most eye-catching ideas is the concealed rear door handle. In addition to the coupe-like roofline, their absence on the actual rear doors emphasized the gracefully executed chrome handles on the front doors. The pre-facelift models were equipped with black mirrors, so they visually fall away against the side windows. With this solution, the sculpture remains clean and simple. Attention is focused on the work that has been put into the sculpture of the body, not into any visual noise like mirrors. I have therefore not drawn any mirrors on these sketches either. It was however probably the very unique face that was the reason the 156 stood out most. It was provided with a graphic never applied in modern car design before, a deep Alfa Romeo radiator grill and an offset license plate next to it. In short, an asymmetrical down the road graphic. Car design language for the combination of surfaces such as the grille, headlights and intakes in the nose. This was a very daring, exceptional design expression and was also a relevant solution in terms of content, the meaning behind it, because it emphasized the grille and also made a connection with Alfa Romeo models from the past. The front is delicately shaped, a rich sculpture with different facets and volumes and if you see the 156 on the street, do take a closer look at that front end. The combination and interplay of materials and shapes is truly very sophisticated. The headlights have an intelligent but non-aggressive focus and are connected horizontally to the central V-shaped grille through small horizontal vents. This solution of connecting graphical elements emphasizes the width of the car. It's an idea that was many years ahead of its time. The simple horizontal air intake at the bottom of the bumper again accentuates the width and with a straightforward shape does not detract from the complex structure above it. Not only is the 156 the best designed modern Alfa Romeo in my book, current models are neither conceptually nor aesthetically coming close to this car. This Alfa is the best holistic design the Silva has ever made. Now on to more recent models. The 159 followed the 156 in 2006. An almost impossible task. The 159 was designed by design house Giorgetto Gigiaro in collaboration with Centro Stile from Alfa Romeo and took many cues from its predecessor. In itself, preserving the essence of the 156 is an understandable strategy after the great impact the 156 had. And surely the 159 is a beautiful car, but unfortunately the iteration is not an overly original take on the Alfa Romeo DNA. And in my view, the execution is not pure enough. 
due to the hard lines and the little rounded nose, especially when seen from a side or above, the front overhang seems very large. It doesn't do the car any favors. The 156's unique lightness and elegance is not reflected in the 159 either. It is perhaps a bit tougher, but also significantly less elegant. Where the Giulia could have truly turned the tide for Alfa Romeo, this design disappointed much more than the 159. Proportionally, the design is strongly based on the BMW 3 Series at the time. That car is beautiful and it is due to its good proportions, which the manufacturer from Bavaria has consistently implemented in every model iteration since the BMW E30. The Giulia, like the 3 Series, has a long nose with short front overhang, a generous amount of meat between the front wheel and the A-pillar and a rear mounted cap. These theoretically good proportions seem an ideal start on paper because it is exactly what an Alfa Romeo needs in this segment. However, even more important is the character of these proportions. Directly taking design ratios and with that a bit of the DNA from one of the most recognizable sports sedans, the BMW 3 Series, is a rather dangerous move. Designing just a beautiful car is not nearly enough to offer a brand future. To make things worse, the Giulia's nice proportions were filled in with surfacing, or skin, which looks strongly into the past. On top of that, the skin is not sharply cut or agile like that of the 156. The shapes are round and heavy and lack proper definition. Graphics such as headlights and the grille are almost a caricature in size and lack purity and sophistication. In other words, it does not look overly intelligent. What was needed was a breath of fresh air. That is what makes a real Alfa Romeo. Designing forcefully styled nostalgic cars which are proportionally poorly executed, such as the HC Competizione, the Mito, Giulietta and Stelvio, are a true dead end. The Giulia is conceptually empty and the technical implementation of the design is weak. Whether that design strategy comes from the board of directors of Alfa Romeo and is forced upon the designers, or it comes from the design study themselves, is not entirely clear. Whatever is the case, the current car undeniably illustrates that the brand is not looking into the future and it reflects on its sales. Every success from the rich Alfa Romeo heritage was an innovative driver's car, visually light sporty, advanced and above all, modern. This car, with its beautiful drive lines and fantastic engines and even rear wheel drive, should be an Italian interpretation of automotive design. And it's anything but that. The 156 was car of the year for a reason.